um, look, if the system that allows people who come to the country illegally to continue, it means we are going to keep on spending money uh, because we've not addressed the entry or exit parts of our country. I agree with Buyo. Um, he is from the ATM, which is, uh, I think it's Africa Transformation Movement. That's the name. Thank God there's no pen in there. <laughs> you know how I feel about pan-Africanism. Uh, anyway, so he seemed to be actually making sense. And actually, a lot of things that he's talking about are things that I've been talking about in my channel, that this is how they need to tackle this problem because this is a huge crisis. You should have declared national emergency. So our view as the ATM is that there needs to be, the government needs to focus on dealing uh, with corruption amongst, is the, amongst the home affairs officials that are stationed by the borders and needs to build capacity for a track and trace system so that if a person comes in the country, there's a system that determines whether this person is here illegally, how long they are they allowed to stay here, so that they are able to be, um, you know, to be taken and to be deported if they overstay, um, overstay they are welcome. You will recall that there's a guy from Japan, he spent 17 years in our country, not traced, um, simply because he, he was running away from Japan because he committed a crime there in Japan. But how could a person who was a fugitive of justice in Japan is able to stay for 17 years in our country without our systems in our country to track whether this person, number one, is in the country, what is the conditions of his stay here? Yeah, that is actually true. Because even now, there is a case right now of a Rwandan genocide person that is actually in South Africa, was arrested and then put into prison, but he's been there for a long time. The authority with this borderless, crazy, dangerous ideology have let this man was roaming around in South Africa. And you wonder why South Africa has so much high crime level. It's this craziness. This is actually crazy. I mean, this is actually crime on itself for the government to even do this to the, its own citizen. A Rwandan genocide suspect has been moved from Polsmore Prison in Cape Town to Helderstrom Prison in Canada due to a security threat against him. Fulgun's Kayashima has been behind bars since May last year following his arrest at a farm in Pol. He's accused of being on the run for more than two decades and living in South Africa under a false name. Full Jones Kaishema was not in court today because police were unable to get him from the Caledon prison on time for his appearance. Kaishema is facing 56 immigration related offenses and is believed to be the most wanted remaining fugitives of the Rwandan genocide in 1994. His family spokesperson, Joseph Habinshuti, says news about a threat of his safety in prison are not sure. And also, we've got Places whereby there's basically no borders, a person can easily jump. So without addressing those things, we are going to continue spending so much money. And again, there needs to be conversation with the Department of International Relations, with these um, countries, because if you are going to have millions and millions of people coming from same same countries coming to South Africa, the countries must take responsibility. It can't be that South Africa alone is going to spend so much money, but those countries are not going to be held accountable. So yeah, so I agree with his sentiment, really. They need to really to have a protection around the border of South Africa and investment and also discussing with their neighbours and how they can manage this problem. This is a huge problem. Um, I don't know, good luck on that one because most of these neighbours, they run by dictators, Zimbabwe and you've got Mozambique and all of them. So that's the reason why their citizens run away from them. But I say that, most citizens, they need to be in their country, really. If you don't have rights to be in the country where you're going, why invading that country by committing crime, by actually entering that country illegal? Why? So I agree with the sentiment, but there also need to be a deterrent policy. I haven't seen a deterrent policy. I haven't seen any policy that actually discourages these people smuggling rings. Because that what they have there is people smuggling rings and lawlessness and some co element of corruption, you know, drone and camera and all of that monitoring of the officials. Those are the things that you need to do. But also funding for 
Home Affairs, Funding for Border Security. ANC has gone about borderless South Africa by removing the funding from that. And they just didn't say it. They didn't say it because they knew if they had been so vocal like Malema, they would lose vote. They would have gone a long time ago. ANC would be gone a long time ago. If they had gone and said, oh, we need to have a borderless South Africa and all of that, yari yari, they would have gone. Um, and <laughs> they would have been out of, uh, yeah, it would have been another party that's actually ruling, not ANC. But they've been so sneaky. And that's what I'm saying to you, South Africans. You do not look at what they say. You look at what they do. Not what they say, what they do. In the next, next election, local government election, you need to look at the party that puts South Africa first. If the party goes about this and that, illegal, whatever, and still talking about advocating for international people that you don't know, you need to be worried about that party. So you need to vote for somebody that puts you your safety, your national security, and number one priority. Not some party that will tell you that, oh, they're center-right, but they're acting like a lunatic, you know, far-right lunatic or whatever, or far-left lunatic. You need a party that actually looks at the interest of South Africa. So that's my advice I have for you. Uh, if you're wanting to know what your choice is going to be, because there's a huge choice. I saw that last year in May election. This, there, that was a huge choice you have there. But now you need to look at the policy and what they do about the policy. You cannot have a situation like this. Kids being poisoned, but you haven't had anything from either one of them except for PA and a couple, okay? With Because ANC, we know people are being poisoned because of ANC anyway. They cannot come to you and say they're fixing it. The problem is created by them anyway. So, you see, they created this problem with the borderless South Africa, with not knowing and checking and having people they don't know to run the most uh, high-risk business like food, okay? So let's listen in to this guy because he's kind of like talking about the same thing I've been saying in my channel. And I'm glad that at least we can see the center, the center right, not the center left, the center right. Okay, let's listen. You are taking it back to the conversation around the fence, the border fence as well, because at some point um, we were sitting with a fence that cost the country millions and even some of the MPs going to inspect it and simply not being happy with what they found. Definitely, there needs to be a proper border system, just like a person has in their own home, whereby there's a proper um, gate, there's a proper fence, that so that a person can know if a person comes inside, these are the proper channels for a person to come inside the country. So we're saying similarly, the same thing must happen in our country, because if you have a case whereby there's um, illegal immigration that is not controlled, you are going to have instances whereby people end up taking the law into their own hands. Because we're going to have cases whereby people commit murder, people commit crimes coming from other countries. They can easily skip the country, they can easily move from one area to another, and the people who are victims will never get justice. Those, but those who are, pardon me for coming in there, but those who are defending the minister are saying that what did you expect him to do? Because ultimately, if he finds people in the country illegally, he is doing something about this and sending them back. So what would you have rather had him do? Keep these people in the country? No, no, no. We're not saying they must be kept in the country.